let's talk about this morning breakfast. Maybe it was just a toast. Maybe milk with cornflakes, bacon, eggs, fruit, name it. Those who know me know that I love food. So my breakfast looks like that. I mean, all of the above. Have you ever considered that your breakfast has something to do with climate change? Yes, Bernie, of course, the plastics, the packaging, the transportation. No, I mean the food, the actual ingredients. Have you thought about that? In the next minutes, I will address how food production can mitigate 20% of the global carbon problem. Climate change is a complex phenomenon, and the release of CO2 into the atmosphere is one of the key contributors to it. But carbon is not some evil substance. Carbon is a natural occurring gas that is part of the carbon cycle, and it is indispensable for life to happen. So the problem is not about how much carbon is in the atmosphere. The problem is how much, of car how much carbon is released into the atmosphere, and once released, how much is recaptured. This should be a balanced cycle. So humans need to be thinking on different ways to move this mass of carbon out of the atmosphere somewhere else. For example, here is an interesting device that can vacuum CO2 out of the air and bury it into the ground. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's yet not enough. I will show a better machine. I'm here to tell you another idea an idea that is right here in our backyards, an idea that has to do with a group of folks that have been feeding the world for centuries. I'm talking about the farmers. The soils of the world has the ability to sequester the annual emissions of the United States. The farmers have the ability to turn this switch on. With three technical principles, I will let you know how. The first one, photosynthesis, means literally built with light. This plant here has the ability to take this molecule of CO2, bind it together with others, and make a brick. And this brick is now constituting part of the leaves, the stems, the sugars of the plant, and even the roots. And guess what? Those roots are deeply rooted into the ground. So they are converting the plant into a machine that can vacuum CO2 out of the air and put it in the ground. Now, this is a cool machine, isn't it? Thanks God for the plants. <laughs> now, once in the soil, that carbon can either be respirated by the microbes and get back to the atmosphere, and we don't want that, or do you remember the compost back in elementary school? My child teacher will put it this way. The microbes of the soil will come mulch, 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 wiggle, 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 poop, poop, poop. <laughs> so now that carbon is integrated into the soil. It is sequestered. So with that song staying in your heads forever, sorry about that, let's get to the second concept. What is diversity means for soil? This soil here, it's made out of silt, sand, and clay. The black thing that keeps it all together is kind of a glue. We call it organic matter. The interesting part is that this organic matter, 58% of it is actually carbon. And from that carbon, the most part of it, it's actually alive. In just a spoonful of this soil, there are more living creatures than people in the world. That's a big crowd, right? So to keep alive this crowd, we will need to feed it. And to feed it, imagine I call my nutritionist and I tell her, hey, hello, Mrs. Robinson, you know what? I'm going to feed myself only with kale from now on. Will she be happy? That is the same that telling a farmer, hey, Joe, you know, I will feed your soil only with corn residue from now on. It simply doesn't work. So photosynthesis with compost, crop diversity, last concept I promise, tillage. When we till the ground that for thousands of years we consider was necessary to prepare the ground for planting, we are actually privileging the first path. We are releasing the CO2 into the atmosphere. This is happening today in seven out of 10 fields in the United States. 
So we now know the recipe. Photosynthesis, crop diversity, no-till, fundamentals are there, it sounds easy, it sounds simple, only it is not. I know that the farmers here are wondering, hey, Bernie, how do I do that in my operation? This without complexity, this without more variables to manage. And they are right. The multimillennial story of agriculture, it's actually about making things simpler. We, we figure out how to transform a complex environment of a prairie with plenty of species and plenty of outcomes into maximizing the production of a single outcome in a single annual crop. But don't think me wrong, that is not inherently bad. That way, we were able to feed the, gro the gl growing global population, and in that, we did succeed. But if we forget about these three principles, we will lose soil through erosion, we will lose microbiological activity, and we will lose carbon. But how is that complex to do all this? Let me tell you how we grow corn, for example. We will plant, we will apply nutrients, we will take care of the pests, weeds, diseases, and we will harvest. If we want to add another crop in this sequence in the single year, let's say to increase the time doing photosynthesis, or to increase the crop diversity, now we need to do all this again. So we are stretching our working windows. We need to be very careful in what we are doing with the first crop, not to impact the second crop. And we will need to become wiser in the use of the water, because now the same amount of rainfall is feeding two crops instead of, instead of one. OK, Bernie, so then you brought a terrible idea. Get out of that stage. <laughs> I did not. I spent most of my career, even before, literally walking more than thousands of fields, both in South America and here in North America, trying to understand the crop, trying to understand the soil, farming, figuring together with farmers what to do in a situation. And I can tell you that farmers are already embracing complexity every time they see value in it. For example, imagine a big cornfield, hundreds of acres, right? Several farmers are today using cutting-edge technology, cutting-edge equipment to manage each individual acre of that field instead of managing the whole field as a one. Let me explain that with different words. When I was a kid, my mother would bring to the table for dinner a single casserole for me and my five brothers. Yes, you get it right. It's basically one casserole versus six boys. And we all love food. The, the point here is, what would she think of preparing an individual menu for each of us? That sound complex? That is what farmers are doing with their acres today. So I am not afraid of proposing to farmers these challenges. It is actually my passion to be with them, helping figuring out how to do it. And I think with the proper incentives, with the proper knowledge sharing with us consumers, with the proper support, in the near future, we will be looking at farmers as the stewards of our atmosphere, the same way we have been looking at them as stewards of our soil. So with this opportunity at hand, if you're farmers, let's, let's think of this idea. Let's, con let's have a mindset of continuous improvement and ask ourselves, how many months of the year is my field doing photosynthesis? Can I extend that time? How many crops am I growing? Can I duplicate the number? How much residue is left on my fields after I harvest? Can I increase that amount? If you are in the ag tech industry, food and ag industry, and I know there is plenty of us here, equipment manufacturers, input providers, ag tech itself, we need to be developing the next agriculture with this mindset. We need to be developing the equipment that will enable multiple passes or more overlap of field activities. We need to be able to develop the inputs that will allow us to do multi-cropping. We need to be developing the technology that will help us take decisions in a more complex environment and to track the progress. If you're on the, the insurance, the government, we need you to increase your programs to support transitions and encourage them. It is risk, and it is learning curves in trying to tweak our production systems. And we need to make sure that we are not letting alone those who push the boundaries. 
to achieve these ambitious goals of carbon sequestration, we will need to make every acre count. As consumers, we can help. We need to start understanding and we need to start learning how our breakfast, how our food is grown. The same way in the past, we were able to recognize organic and some people is willing to pay a premium for that at the groceries, we need to start recognizing climate smart food production. In the near future, farmers will be the stewards of our atmosphere. Thanks very much for listening and let's make it happening.